Hi everybody, welcome to Live Blogger. In this video, I'll show you how to design this animated home page using HTML and CSS. So let's get started. Right, so I have opened this folder called animated home page in Visual Studio Code. So this is the code editor that we're going to use. And I also have this folder called images over here. And in that we have these images which we're going to use in our design. So this is an image of a snowflake and I also have this image right here. So I'm going to show you two different ways of adding the animation. So let's start by creating an HTML file. So let's click on new file and I'll just create a file called index.html and let's create one more file for the CSS. So let's type style.css and let's start with the index.html file. Now in VS Code you have this shortcut where you can just press exclamation and press tab and you'll have this basic HTML file code. And here we will link our CSS file. So I'll just type link and press tab. And in the HDF, I'll just type style.css. And now let's start with the markup. First of all, let's design all the other elements. And uh, then later we will add the animation. So we'll start by creating a division with the class of container. And uh, in that we will have a division with the class of hero container. And uh, in this we will have an h1. And uh, I'll just type winter is fun. And we'll also create a paragraph. And I will just type some text over here. And lastly, we'll have an anchor tag, which we'll use as a button. So we'll also give it a class called BTN. And we'll style it using CSS. So here in the text, we'll just type plan it. All right, now let's open this in our browser. So I have this extension called Live Server installed in VS Code. So here in the HTML, I can just right click and click on open with Live Server. Now here in the HTML, we also need to add the Snowflakes image. But first of all, let's design this. So let's go to our style.css file. And let's start by resetting some CSS properties. So I'll just use a universal selector. So asterisk. And here I'll just type margin 0 and padding 0. That gets rid of all the margin and the padding in our website. Now let's uh, add a font family to the body. So I'll just type font family. And we'll use a font called Poppins. Now I have this font installed in my system. So that's why we can see that the font is being displayed. Now, when you're planning to use this in your production website, you have to get the link of the font from Google Fonts. And you can go ahead and add the link in the HTML file. Let's do it. All right, so here I'm in the official website of Google Fonts. And here we can see the Poppins font. If you don't find it, you can just search for it over here. And we'll just click on that. And let's select two styles from here. We will select the regular one. So just click on this uh, Select this Style button. And we'll also select the bold version so I think let's select the 800 version so let's select this as well right now let's scroll up and here you can see we have this button so let's click on that and here we have these selected fonts let's copy this link from here so I just copy this and we'll just paste it over here in the head section inside our HTML right, so now let's continue with our design First of all, let's style the container division. So here we can see we have this division called container and in that we have all the other elements. So let's target that. We'll just type dot container and we'll give it a height of 100 viewport height and a width of 100%. Let's add a background color and see whether the width has been applied. So here we can see we have this red background color. Now we're going to add a background image. So let's delete this and here we will type background image and uh, here we need to type URL and uh, here we'll type images slash because we have this folder called images and in that we have an image which we're going to use. So let's type main bg dot jpg. Right, so now we can see we have this background image. Let's also set the background size. So I'll just type background size and we'll set it to cover and we'll also set a background position to center. And we'll also set the overflow to hidden so that anything outside this division won't be visible. All right now let's style this hero container. So we have this division called hero container and in that we have the h1 and uh, the paragraph and the button. So let's target that. Here we'll just type container, hero container. And we'll give it a position of absolute. And we'll bring it to the center vertically. So we'll just type top 50%. And now we can see that it starts from the center, but we want all of this to be in the center. So for that, you have to move it 50% of the element. So let's type transform and we'll type translate Y and we'll set it to negative 50%. And now it is exactly in the center. 
Now let's set the left position to 100 pixels and we'll also set the color to white. Now let's style the H1. So let's type container hero container H1 and let's set the font size to 60 pixels and we'll text transform it to uppercase. All right now let's style this paragraph. So let's type container hero container P and uh, we will set the font size to 20 pixels and we'll also set the color of the text to yellow so we'll just type ffff00 and we'll also add a border top and we'll set it to 1 pixel solid white and we'll also add a padding of 10 pixels right now let's style the button which is the anchor tag and uh, we have given it a class called btn so let's target that so here we'll type container hero container btn and uh, let's set the color of the text to white and uh, we will give it a border of 2 pixels solid white and uh, let's give it a padding of 8 pixels top and bottom and 48 pixels left and right and we'll also give it a margin top of 30 pixels and the margin is not being applied because this is an inline element so we have to set it to inline block right now we can see we have the margin and uh, let's set the font size to 20 pixels and we'll also remove the underline so we'll just type text decoration and we'll set it to none and uh, let's also add a border radius to have rounded corners so I'll just type 20 pixels and I think that's pretty much it for this button and we'll also have a hover effect so let's type container hero container btn colon hover and let's set a background color of red and we'll also add a transition and we'll tap all to 400 milliseconds so that we have this smooth animation. And uh, let's also set a font weight of bold. So I'll just tap font weight and we'll set it to 800. All right, now that we are done with the main design, let's add the animation of the snowflakes. So let's go back to our HTML and uh, we will create a division and uh, we'll give it a class of snowflakes and let's add the image of the snowflake so I'll just type IMG and in the source I'll just type images slash and we have this image called snowflake.png and let's go back to our website and here we can see we have the snowflake image now it is a really large image as of now but you have to make it smaller if you're using this in a real website but since this is just a demo website I'm going to use this image you can use Photoshop or any other uh, online uh, tool to resize this image. Alright, so let's go ahead and add the image at the top over here. So we're going to start it from the top and we're going to make it fall down. And we also need to have a lot of these snowflakes. So let's go ahead and uh, duplicate this. And I'll just create 10 of them. So I'll just duplicate it 9 more times. So now here we have 10 snowflakes images. Now you can go ahead and add any number of images you want. But make sure that the more images you add, the more heavy the website will become. So you also have to keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and start styling this. So let's go back to our style.css file. And uh, let's add a comment. So I'll just type snowflakes. Now let's select the division with the class of snowflakes. And we'll set the position to absolute. And we'll set the top position to zero. And now we can see that uh, the image is at the top. We'll also reduce the size of the image. So let's type snowflakes and img and we'll set the width to 50 pixels. All right, now we can see we have all these images at the top. Now we're going to separate all of these evenly. So here for the snowflakes, I'll just type display of flex and justify content to space between. And we'll also set the width to 100%. And now we can see that all these images are spread out evenly. Now the last thing to do is add the animation. So let's go back over here and uh, let's create an animation. So for that you have to type at keyframes and you have to name the animation over here. So we'll just name it snowflake. And we can have timelines over here. So it starts from 0 through 100%. So I'll just type 0. So here are the first frame we will have the transform translate and uh, we will set it to 0, 0. So this will be the default position. And at the beginning we will also set the opacity to 0. And around 25% we will set the opacity to 1. And when we are at 100%, we will set the transform translate. 
So we will move it to 200 pixels in the X axis and 90 viewport height in the Y axis. And we'll also set the opacity back to zero. And here we'll also add one more frame. So we'll just type 50%. And even at the 50%, we will have the opacity set to one. So this is how it works. We have the transform translate value set to the default position. So at the beginning, it will be at the top over here. And we'll also have the opacity set to zero. And when we are at 25%, we will set the opacity to one. And till 50%, we will have the opacity set to one. And from there, we will set the opacity back to zero when we are at 100%. And we'll also move it all the way to 200 pixels in the X axis and 90 viewport height in the Y axis. Now let's add this animation to our image. So here I'll just type animation. And here we'll type the name of the animation. So I'll just type snowflake. And the next property is the duration of the animation. So let's set it to 10 seconds. And we want it to run infinitely. So I'll just type infinite. And we'll also set the animation easing function to linear. So it will have the same speed throughout the animation. So let's go back to our website. And here we can see the animation is being displayed. And everything is working all right. But we can see that we have this scroll bar displayed over here at the top and at the bottom. So for that, let's go back to our HTML. And let's see what's the problem. So here we can see we have created this snowflakes division outside this container. So we have to cut this from here. And we have to paste it inside the container. So I'll just paste it over here. All right, now let's go back to our CSS and we have to make some changes over here as well. Now here we can remove the position absolute and top from here because uh, it is inside the container now. So we will have the position of the container. All right, now we can see that the scroll bars are not being displayed. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to change up the animation. So we have to set different animation duration for some of these images. And for some of these images, we need to set different animation delay and so on so that everything will be randomized. So let's go back to our CSS and we'll just remove the animation property from here inside the IMG. And let's select each of the images separately. So here we'll just type snowflakes IMG and we'll type colon nth of type. And here we'll type one. So this will select the first image inside snowflakes. And let's add the animation over here. So I'll just type animation and uh, we'll set it to snowflake, which is the name of the animation. And uh, for the first one, we will have 15 seconds duration and we'll set it to infinite and linear. And for the first one, we will have an animation delay. So I'll just type animation delay and we'll set it to two seconds. All right, so now let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page. And we can see that the animation is being displayed after two seconds. Now we need to select all the 10 different images and add different animation duration and animation delay to all of them. And if you go back and refresh this page, we can see that this image is being displayed at the beginning. So at the beginning, we need to set the opacity to zero. So here in the IMG, I'll just type opacity and we'll set it to zero. All right, so I'll just quickly add some animation delay and uh, different animation duration to all the images. Or so I have finally added different animation delay and duration to all these images. So here we can see I have selected all the 10 images. And now let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page. And we can see that everything looks all right. We have the animation working just as we wanted. All right, now let me show you a different way of adding the animation. Now, if you don't want to write all this code for selecting all these images separately and adding different animation delays and animation duration, then you can go ahead and create an image just like this. So this right here, we can see that we have plenty of snowflakes over here. It is just this image right here and I just duplicated it and added it a lot more times. And you can do this with Photoshop or any other image editing software you have. But make sure that you have this uh, transparent background for this uh, snowflakes. Right, once you have created an image like this, you can use this as the animation. So let me show you how to add this as the animation. So let's go back to our index.html file and I'll just comment these lines of code. So for that, you can just press control forward slash and we can see that it has been commented. Let's go back to our website and we don't have the animation over here. 
right now let's create a division and let's give it a class of snowflakes container and in that we'll have the image so let's type img and here in the source I'll just type images slash snowflakes one dot png all right now we can see that the image is being displayed over here now let's add the animation so let's go back to our CSS file and uh, let's go over here and uh, let's just target that so I'll just type container snowflakes container and I'll just type img and here I'll just type animation and I will set it to snowflake so we'll use the same animation that we created over here all right let's set the duration to 20 seconds and we'll set it to infinite and linear now let's go back to our website and let's refresh this and here we can see that the animation is being displayed now to make it even more interesting we will add one more image so I'll just go over here and I'll just duplicate this and let's target both of these images so let's go back over here to style.css and here I'll just type colon nth of type 1 and I'll just copy this and paste it down here and here we'll type nth of type 2 and here I'll just set the duration to 14 seconds and we'll also add an animation delay and I will set it to 10 seconds and let's set the opacity to 0 by default so let's type container snowflakes container img and opacity to 0 now since we have added two images uh, both these images will be one below the other so let me just comment these uh, lines of animation let me also comment this opacity and here you can see we have the first image over here and we have the second image down here so we'll bring both these images at the top so for that we have to select the container so we'll just type snowflakes container and we'll set the position to relative and let's uncomment this and uh, for the first image let's set a position of absolute and we'll set the top position to zero and the left position to zero and for the second one let's uncomment this and uh, let's set the top position to let's say negative 200 pixels and the left position to zero now let's go back to our website and let's refresh this page so this is the first image and after 10 seconds uh, we will have the second image being displayed so here we can see the second image is being displayed so that's how you can add animation using uh, the other images that I showed over here so these are some of the two ways in which you can add animation to your home page I'll just comment this and uh, I think this looks better so I'll just uncomment this so that's basically it for this video this is how you can add snowflakes animation to your home page and I'll also leave the link of the source code in the description of this video so you can just go ahead and download it and test it out so that's it for this video if you have any doubts you can ask in the comments below and if you like this video please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates thanks a lot for watching have a nice day